Hello, and so let's take a look at your activity 21, that is your physical and chemical properties of your lipids, okay? And so your lipids, you already know the one, and so please watch the other video, and so if you're still, uh, you still don't know what lipids are, okay? And so let's take a look at your physical and chemical properties of your lipids. <clears throat> Okay, and so your lipids, they are organic substances made up of fatty acids and of course they're naturally existing derivatives, uh, existing compounds and derivatives, okay? And so you have the, your true fats accordingly and so just with that, your true fats and so constitute the storage material for energy and so that is in both animals and uh, plants, no? And so they are your lipids, they are abundant in your subcutaneous and intramuscular connective tissues. And so they are this one. And so was what we talked uh, earlier in the other video that your lipids, they serve as a heat insulator. And so they trap the heat, okay? And so you have uh, there, okay? And so that is for your lipids, okay? And so let's take a look at your properties. Your neutral fats, and so your neutral fats, accordingly, they are odorless, tasteless, and what you call this, colorless, no? And so they have this, your neutral fats, and so they have this uh, characteristic greasy feeling, no? And so they have this characteristic greasy feeling, okay? And so the color, and so uh, your neutral fats is what we said, they are colorless, but then, and so your fats at times uh, you have their color no and so they are uh, there is a uh, there are other fats that are uh, colored no and so like a shade of yellow and others no and so with that and so the color is imparted the color imparted by fats is due to the pigments dissolved no and so let's take a look you have there probably you have your carotene your xanthophylls that are actually uh, dissolved in these uh, fats, okay, and so giving them, giving these fats their color, okay, and so, but then generally, and so they are colorless, okay, and so with that, your melting point increases as the molecular weight increases, okay, and so you have uh, there also, okay, and so you have the, the melting point of your fats and so increases as the molecular weight increases and so that is just the same with your hydrocarbons no and so with your other uh, hydrocarbons no and so there is if there is an increase and so in the carbon uh, chain hydrocarbon chain and so thereby increasing also the molecular weight then the melting point and boiling point of each will increase okay and so your neutral fats and so oh, you have your your neutral fats accordingly with a large amount and so with large amount of unsaturated fatty acids are liquid at room temperature okay and so you have uh, there again and so your neutral fats they are odorless colorless and tasteless and so of course that is when they are pure no and so again the color and so the color of your uh fats and so it's due to the pig pigments dissolved in them okay and so let's take a look at uh, your other properties okay and so your neutral fats and so they have this characteristic greasy feeling as what we said earlier and so that is and so when when they are brought in contact with the paper and so it penetrates through and so when it when they are brought in contact with a substance probably and so but then a good example of that is a paper no and so when they are brought in contact with the paper and so it penetrates through and so the paper and produces a translucent spot and so that is actually the idea behind your trans your spot Test. And so you did the one with the, what you call this your three samples. You have there your oil, and then you have your milk and your chocolate. Okay, and so you have there, of course, your solubility. And so your uh, fats, and so they are generally, and so they are insoluble in ordinary solvents. No, and so, but then, and so probably in polar solvents, but then they are dissolved in chloroform and so your benzene your ether and boiling alcohol probably and so they are dissolved in nonpolar solvents 
Okay, and so acetone, and so this one can also dissolve that, and so and other nonpolar solvents. Okay, and so this one, and so your uh, what do you call this? Your fats. Okay, and so your fats they are non-volatile. Okay, and so they are non-volatile, and uh, they produce characteristic crystals, and so with a definite melting point. And so this one, and so of course this melting point probably, and so this crystal with that has a definite melting point and so uh, actually serves as a key I mean a differentiator and so of your fats from uh, of one fat from another fat okay and so that is for that okay and so you have uh, there moving on okay and so your fats okay and so your fats are insoluble in water and of course and so when you mix and so when you put a drop of fat in a water and so that will float okay and so they will float and so they will not be mixed and so there will be uh there will be a separation of two layers okay and so with that and so your fats they are insoluble and so thereby giving a separate layers and so with that and so your uh, fats will float in water because uh, they have a lower specific gravity comparing it to your water and so that is why they will float okay and so vigorous vigorous and so vigorous shaking and so will break the fats into fine particles and so vigorous shaking will break the fats into fine particles but then and so when you let it settle down and so it will uh, what you call this they will combine again and so they will fuse they will coalesce again okay and so you have there and so it forms and so of course your vigorous shaking will form your temporary emulsion and so remember that it's a temporary and so and of course this temporary temporary emulsion and so can be and so uh can be what you call they say this temporary emulsion can be uh, somewhat permanent and so if you add a stabilizing agent or what you call this an emulsifying agent and so this emulsifying agent will prevent the coalesce of your fat droplets and so will prevent the fusion and so the combination of this fat droplets and so examples of this and so you have there your uh, soap no and so they are your emul your soap is an emulsifying some emulsifying agent your bile that is also an emulsifying agent okay and so of course this emulsifying agent will lower the surface tension of your aqueous face with that okay and so thereby and so making them uh thereby and so uh there is no uh formation again of your uh there is no uh, combination again of this uh, emulsoids no and so of your fats okay and so that is for your fats and so moving on let's take a look at your spot test okay and so your spot test here and so you use your acetone and paper okay and so you use your acetone and ordinary paper and so but then and so you can also use or uh, filter paper for this one okay and so your fats and so will not uh, uh, wet the paper okay and so the, it will not wet the paper comparing it to your water and so and oil and so you have here and so your uh, after drying and so your oil and so it will produce you a translucent spot no and so while for your uh water and so it will dry and then of course uh, uh babalik siya in its ordinary form no okay and so your uh they will uh the oil and so your fat sorry and so will penetrate uh, through the substance to produce a translucent spot or greasy spot and so if you try to touch it and so it has a greasy feeling and so sabi natin kanina nor, your neutral fats they have this greasy feeling okay and so you have there yeah, and so this translucent spot will not disappear unlike in water okay and so what you did in the laboratory is you use your uh, oil again and then of course you use your uh, milk and your chocolate and so but then uh, your observation and so uh, let's take a look at this first sorry and so your oil of course and so probably and so your lard and then your oil will give you a positive spot test but then and so let's take a look at the composition of your milk and your 
uh, chocolate. Okay, and so let's take a look at your composition of your milk and your chocolate. And so for your milk, and so it has, it has, uh, what do you call this? It contains a relatively reasonable amounts of fat, no? And so that is from your uh, yes, from remember that your milk and so it comes from an animal, no, and that one contains a reasonable amount of uh, fat, and so together with your chocolate, and so it also contains a reasonable amount of fat, no, and so probably more of the saturated fats for that, and so with this, and so with that in mind, and so both uh, should be, and so your acetone there is used accordingly to extract, and so the fats present in these substances, and so with that, and so supposed to be, and so they will give a positive spot test. But then, and so with the prominent, and so the prominent with your prominent uh, sample that would, that give you uh, that gave you a positive spot test is your oil. Okay, and so and your lard, and so this, and so will give you a uh, positive for your spot test. Okay, and so that is uh, for that again. The positive result is the production of your spot test. I have your a translucent spot. Okay, and so of course you describe it as translucent. No, and so if I if you are asking, and so your observation, and so just simply there is a, a translucent spot. And so a production of translucent spot. And so if there is none, and so then you should say, and so you just stay in the paper, and so there is no production of a translucent spot. Okay, and so with that, and so it dried up and no uh, translucent spot. And so those items. Okay, and so moving on, you have here your acrylene test. Okay, and so your acrylene test, and so this one is a test for the presence of glycerol in a sample. Okay, and so either, and so either what is being detected here is the free or your sterified glycerol. And so this one is based on the oxidative dehydration of your glycerol to your acrylene. And so your acrylene is a dehydrated and so oxidatively dehydrated to produce so acrylene okay and so what are your samples here and so you have your you used your potassium bisulfate no and so you put a drop and so of your potassium bisulfate and then no uh, a pinch no a pinch of your potassium bisulfate and you heat the sample after which and so you after that, and so you heat, and so you heat the sample, you heated the sample, okay, and so that, of course, and so you're heating, and then, of course, your uh, oxidative, oxidative dehydration, and so, uh, what do you call this, and so oxidative dehydration uh, will produce you your acrylene again, and so you have uh, there, <clears throat> And so a substitute for your potassium bisulfate is you can actually use your potassium hydrogen sulfate. And so but this one accordingly is the older one. And so the older method that is used, no, and so the older reagent. Okay, and so in your acrylene, and so of course with that, and so there is a production of a pungent or acrid odor. No? And so your acrolein, and so your acrolein has a pungent smell or smell of a burnt cooking oil. And so with that, of course, after heating, and so of course you waft, you smell, and so and then of course just waft, and so do not inhale it deeply because your acrolein is relatively toxic, no? And so with this, and so just waft, and then of course uh, you note the odor, and so if the odor is a uh, smell of burning oil, burn, burning cooking oil, or pungent, or acrid, and so then, of course, you write it in your observation, and so with that, accordingly, your steric acid, and so will not give you a, I mean, it will give you a negative test, okay, and so it will give you a negative test for your acrylene test, and so for your, uh, uh, for your your steric acid and so in your steric acid that is just a fatty acid okay and so and the rest and so you have there will give you actually a uh what they call this it will give you a positive test and so i don't know and so if there is really a sweet odor that you uh inhaled in your glycerol but then okay moving on 
Ayan, so moving on. Ayan, so let's take a look at this. I mean, sorry. And so, of course, all compounds that contains glycerol in your acrolein test, when tested with acrolein test, will give a positive result. Again, ayan, so all compounds that has a glycerol, ayan, so will give a positive test for your acrolein test. Okay? And so moving on. You have here your test for the degree of unsaturation. And so I think I made a, uh, a misconception here. I mean, I interchange, no? And so with this, okay? And so what you did here is you used your uh, Lugul's iodine, no? And so you mix your Lugul's iodine and chloroform, no? And so to produce you a pink or violet or purple, no? And so you did uh, pink or violet, uh, sorry, pink or purple color okay and so the idea here is and so you have here uh you add a you add drop by drop your sample what is your sample here and so of course your agent is lugul's iodine and your chloroform to give you a pink color and then your sample is you have there your uh your oil and so what you did is what you used is a corn oil and and then yes your corn oil and Lard. Okay, and so uh, with this, of course, there is you add your corn oil or lard drop by drop. Okay, and so after adding, and so you mix, you add, you mix, you add, you mix, you add, you mix. But then, of course, note carefully note the number of drops that you add. And so until, of course, there is a disappearance of your pink color. Okay, and so until there is a disappearance of your pink color and so taking up of iodine by your unsaturated fatty acid and so with this and so the disappearance of the pink color is a, what you call this your the double bonds present in your fatty acid accordingly and so they are capable of taking up halogens no and so probably you have there your iodine that is used here okay and so and then of course you count the number of drops and so that will what you call this with that and so accordingly and so the high the longer it takes for the pink color to disappear and so it means there is a the greater double bond or degree the greater double bond present in your fatty in your sample or in your fatty acid probably or and so there there is a greater degree of unsaturation okay and so greater degree of unsaturation and so the lesser the lesser the lesser the what you call this the lesser the sample that is dropped and so to uh disappear for the disappearance of your pink color and so meaning there is a lesser degree of unsaturation and so meaning there is a lesser double band and so what is your degree of unsaturation here is of course your unsaturation corresponds to the presence of double bands kasi sabi na kapag sabi nating unsaturated and so there is still there is a double band present and so again there is still a available bonding Okay, and so unlike if you say saturated, meaning punung-puno na siya. Okay, and so you have there. Okay, and so let's take a look at your iodine number. Okay, and so your iodine number, and so this is, it refers accordingly to the number of grams of iodine that is taken up by 100 grams of, grams of fat. Okay, and so with that. Okay, and so your unsaturated fatty acids are capable of taking up halogens in their double band. And so that is actually uh, for, uh, that is actually the idea employed in the use of your uh, Lugul's iodine and chloroform and then of course the adding of your uh, sample. Okay, and so you have there your unsaturated fatty acids. They are capable of taking up halogens in their double band. And so in your Lugul's iodine, what I mean in, in what we did in the laboratory is you use what halogen? We used your iodine. Okay, and so the degree of unsaturation and so can be measured by the amount of iodine required. Okay, and so you have uh, there Okay, again, and so this one, if you have more, and so if you have more samples, sample it takes to, uh, what you call this, for the disappearance, and so if you have more sample it takes for the disappearance of the pink color, then that is more of unsaturated. Okay, and so let's take a look at the other slide. 
for this. Okay, and so I've said last time, and so that your lard should be, I said the last time that your lard should has a the highest that drops, drops, but then it's the other way around, no? And so it should be, and so, uh, and so it should be uh, the least. And so it should be the least. And so you uh, should mix it actually. And so you mix. And so you add. And then you mix. You add. You mix. You add. You mix. And so that is how it is actually done for your uh, for the uh, procedure in the laboratory. Okay. And so your lard. And so this one. Your iodine number here, and so is what you call this the lesser, and sorry, and so with that, the lesser accordingly, the iodine number, and so there is a, a lesser amount of uh, unsaturation, lesser degree of unsaturation, or lesser amount of uh, double bonds present. Okay, and so let's take a look at this one your coconut oil, and so this one is, a, is more of saturated. Okay, and so this one is more of saturated. Okay, and so it has an iodine number of 6 to 10. And so it has an iodine number of 6 to 10. Okay, and so it will uh, quickly, and so it will, uh, the, what you call this, <clears throat> the, sample, the pink solution, if you try to use your coconut oil, and so the pink solution will uh, disappear the fastest no and so your butter and so it has a what you call this because relatively this compounds they contain more of unsaturated i mean sorry they say this coconut oil this butter and so this beef and so the beef fat and so they contain more of saturated and so they contain more of saturated fats and so there is a there is more of saturated fats comparing to the unsaturated fats okay and so your lard and so this one is used in the laboratory have this one as uh, what you call this at 46 to 6 47 to 66.5 i did number and so comparing it to your corn oil corn oil is used in the laboratory this one is one of the uh samples that we use no and so it is at 115 to 130 and so meaning there is more of double bands present okay and so that is it for that and so and then of course you have your linseed oil at 175 to 200 to iodine number okay okay and so moving on let's take a look at your saponification number okay and so your saponification number this one is uh, what you call this the number of milligrams and so your saponification number is the number of milligrams of alkali and so needed to neutralize the fatty acids that is present in one gram of fat okay and so that is for your saponification okay and so you have here it uses your sodium or potassium hydroxide okay and so it uses your uh sodium or potassium hydroxide of course of course this one and so uh they can interact with your fatty uh, with your fats okay and so your sodium and potassium hydroxide and note that this one they are used in preparing your soaps no and so your uh with this and so your greater fatty acids accordingly and so meaning and so more alkali to you need more of alkali to neutralize the sample okay and so your greater fatty acids and so if you have a greater fatty acids present in the uh in the sample in the solution then you need more of alkali of this sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide to neutralize the sample okay and so let's take a look at this one and so you have there either you have there your short or if you have greater short or you have a fatty acids no and so let's take a look at uh, this one your oleo margarine and so it has less fatty acid chains and then with that if you have lesser and so you have a lower saponification number 
Okay? And so, sabi nga natin kanina, if you have more of fatty acids, then you need more, greater fatty acids, and so meaning more alkali to neutralize. Okay? And so, your oleomar oleomargarine, and so it has more, it has lesser fatty acids, and so it has a lower saponification number. And so, probably that is at 195. And so, comparing it to your butter, and so your butter has many fatty acid chains, and so that is why you need a more of sodium or potassium hydroxide to neutralize the sample, giving you a greater saponification number. Okay, and so your oleo margarine, that is at 195. Your olive oil, that is 185 to 196. And your butter, that is butter, that is at 210 to 230 of a saponification number. Okay, and so moving on, let's take a look at your acetyl number. And so your acetyl number, and so this one is, it is your, what you call this, your uh, number, uh, number of milligrams of potassium hydroxide that is needed to neutralize the acetic acid. Okay, and so saan nang galing yung acetic acid? <clears throat> Where did it come from? And so it is from the liberation. And so it is liberated from the hydrolysis of one gram of acetylated fat. Okay, and so from the hydrolysis of your acetylated fat. And so with your acetyl number again, and so your milligrams, and so it is the number of uh number of milligrams of potassium hydroxide and so number of milligrams of potassium hydroxide that is needed to neutralize your acetic acid and so that is uh, liberated from hydrolysis of one gram of acetylated fat and so of course you have here one gram that is your sample okay and so with this and so it actually and so in your acetyl number and so it actually uh what you call this, it actually measures your hydroxyl group present in the fat. Okay, and so it actually measures your hydroxyl group that is present in the fat. Okay, and so of course we didn't do this in the laboratory. And so by this one, this is another way to what you call this, to check. Okay, and so moving on, and so let's take a look at your hydrolysis of fats. Okay, of course, your fats, they can be hydrolyzed, like your proteins, your carbohydrates, and so they can go, they can undergo hydrolysis. And so you have here, and so your uh, your fats, they are easily hydrolyzed by acids, by enzymes, and by heat, okay, and so by heat, okay, and so with this, of course, and so your hydrolysis of fats will liberate your fatty acid and glycerol, okay, and so it will liberate, and so individual fatty acids and glycerol, okay, and so let's take a look at an example, and so your sterine, and so your sterine here, this one is a fat, and so with that, and so if you hydrolyze it using an acid or, uh, of course, uh, addition of hydrolysis with the breaking down with the addition of water. No, and so in the presence of water, in the presence of acids or enzymes or heat, and so they say sterine will give you uh the one fatty a fatty acid and a, a glycerol. Okay, and so you have there your steric acid and then your glycerol. Okay, and so you have your steric acid as the fatty acid and then of course your glycerol. Okay. And so, that is it for your hydrolysis of fat. Okay, moving on. Your saponification. Okay, and so with your saponification, this one is also, it utilizes your hydrolysis idea also. Okay, and so, but then, instead of acids, and so, we use alkali here and so what and so you have you can use make use of your sodium your potassium hydroxide with that and so also okay and so you use your alkali again your saponification here and so it uses the idea of your what they call this your hydrolysis and so but then instead of acid ang ganagag Instead of acid, that you will utilize, and so you utilize alkali. Okay, and so you have here. Okay, and so let's take a look. And so if you use your 
uh, potassium, potassium hydroxide, and so you will produce a potassium, I mean a potassium soap that are actually soft, no? And so, of course, and so with the use of your alkali, and so your alkali will produce so, uh, alkali plus your uh, fat, and so will uh, produce metallic salts of fatty acids, okay? And so metallic salts of fatty acids and glycerol, okay? Again, and so the use of your alkali, let's say you have here a fat plus your alkali, sodium, al sodium hydroxide, let's say, and so you reacted and so it will hydrolyze but then and so it will give you a fatty acid a what they call this a fatty acid soap and then you have here your a mercury salt sorry i mean metallic salt it will give you metallic salts of your fatty acids let's take a look that probably that the, that is your soap and then of course your glycerol Okay, and so let's take a look at uh, this. Okay, and so your potassium soaps, and so they are soft. Of course, what did you use here? You ha you used your uh, potassium hydroxide. Your sodium soaps, and so they are hard, and so to give you, uh, they are hard, and then your calcium and magnesium, uh, your calcium and magnesium soaps accordingly, and so your cal calcium and magnesium will form insoluble salts, no? And so you have there, of course. And so the cleansing power of your uh, soap, and so the cleansing power of your soap, and so is attributed to its emulsifying property. And so it can also, sabi natin kanina you have in the saponification earlier, you have there your soap and bile. I mean emulsifying. And so you have there your soap and bile. Okay, and so with this, the cleansing power of your soap and so is attributed to your emulsifying property of the soap. Okay, and so you have there accordingly. And so your dirt is held on the surface of the body. Okay, and so you have Let's say if you washed and so in your washing or hand washing. And so the dirt that, that is present is held on the surface of the body by greasy substances. And so which of course they are emulsified and so and they are easily washed away with water. And so they are emulsified and they are easily washed away with water. Okay. And so you have there. And so it can also reduce so your uh <clears throat> What they call this, it can also do it by reducing, sorry, and so you re by reducing the surface tension. And so it can also, uh, what you call this, reduce the sur surface tension. And so allowing, and so to penetrate the dirt. And then, of course, easy washing. Okay, and so that is for your saponification. Moving on. Let's take a look at your Lieberman Burchard, Burchard, okay, and so Burchard test, okay, and so this one, of course, you already know this, your Lieberman and your Salkowski, and so both of this, they are tests for your cholesterol, and so meaning, and so if you have cholesterol present in your sample, and so they should give you a positive test, okay, and so you already know this one, and so your Lieberman Burkhardt test, and so it uses your chloroform, your acetic anhydride, and concentrated sulfuric acid, and so this one, you in your Lieberman Burkhardt test, accordingly, this one is, uh, the test is done at a uh, at a dry, ayan, so in a dry condition, and so giving you an anhydride here. And so the positive test, the positive result is a production of your bluish green to emerald green. Okay. Ayan, so your acetic anhydride here, and so uh, serves as a dehydrating agent. And your sulfuric acid, and so serves as a, as the oxidizing agent agent okay and so you already know this one and then of course this one is a test for uh, uh, for cholesterol and so your samples here you have there your uh egg yolk and so fresh egg yolk and so with this of course it will give a positive result and cholesterol and so you have your fresh egg yolk and cholesterol and so with this of course they will give a positive test Okay, and so you have there, moving on, and so you have there your Salkowski, and so again, you know this one, 
And so, you know this Sal Salkowski test, okay? And so, it utilizes your chlor chloroform and your concentrated uh, sulfuric acid still, okay? And so, your uh, chloroform here and so serves as your dehydrating agent. And then, of course, you have your, the result, and so is you have there your, uh, your uh, in the upper layer and so that is where you can find your sulfuric acid will give you red and in the uh, the lower layer and so the bottom layer you have it as your yellow with uh, yellow with green fluorescence okay and so yellow with green fluorescence okay and so with this of course your cholesterol again is dehydrated in the presence of your chloroform okay and so, of course, you have there a red color, okay? And so, you have a red color. Okay, and so, that is uh, for your Salkowski. And so, cholesterol, and so, we'll give those that contain cholesterol, will give a positive test for your Salkowski, okay? Moving on, let's take a look at your fats. And so, what is the difference of this, your fats and oils? And so, ulitin ulit natin. And so, I know you know already this one. And so, we talked this one in the other video. And so, your fats, okay? And so, they are solid at room temperature, okay? And so, because, and so, they have a large proportion of saturated fatty acids. And so, examples of this, and so, your lard, your butter, and so, those items, okay? And then, your oils, and so your oils, and so they are liquid at room temperature, and they have high, as uh, un high unsaturated fatty acid content. Okay, and so they have high unsaturated fatty acid content. Okay, let's take a look at this. Your glycolipid. Okay, and so you have here your glycolipid. I know you know this one still. And so your glycolipid, and so they are uh, lipid molecules, and so with carbohydrate groups attached to them. Okay, and so of course your glycolipid, and so with this, and so it, uh, what do you call this? Uh, they are found in your cell membrane, no? And so primarily again with your cell within your cell membrane okay and so the uh let's take a look at uh, this one okay and so your uh importance of your glycolipid okay and so they are important in your they contribute in the uh fluidity of your cell membrane and so they are involved in the maintaining of the proper organization and flexibility of your lipid bilayer okay and so you have there Okay, and so the carbohydrate portion is uh, sometimes involved in, in your glycolipid. And so the carbohydrate portion is sometimes involved in cell recognition in, and adhesion. Okay, and so in cell recognition and adhesion, this ones, of course, they are important in immune response and the communication, of course, between your cells. No? And so they're important in immune response. Other than that, and so this one, and so with in relation to that uh, uh, cell recognition and adhesion and so <clears throat> you have your glycolipids and so they can act as uh, antigens and so you have actually a lot of antigens that are uh, glycolipid in nature of course and so with this and so they are uh, recognized by your cells okay and then of course other than that and so again they act as an antigen na sabi natin kanina and so with this they act as an antigen and so remember that the antigen present in your uh the antigen present in your uh cells that are that determines your abo blood grouping and so your that determines your abo blood groups and so they are actually glycolipids okay and so you have there and so the presence or absence of this antigens present in your abo i mean in your blood cells and so i uh, will determine your blood group okay and so you will talk about this one your abo blood groups in your blood banking and uh, in your immunohematology sorry Okay, and so with that, but then it's it's important for you to know that your your 
your glycolipids accordingly are part of your are, are, are your ABO antigen. Sorry, they are glycolipid in nature. Okay, and so you have uh, there, and then of course energy reserve and so glycolipid and so with this uh, they are energy they uh, serve as energy reserve no and so in case and so that your body your energy your body is depleted with an energy and so this glycolipid accordingly can be converted to energy okay moving on and so your phospholipids your phospholipids and so you have there your phosphatids or your this is otherwise known as phosphatids or your phosphorized fats and so they are found in cells of both plants and animals of course and they are made up of nitrogenous base fatty acids and phosphoric acid and glycerol okay and so you have your lecithin and your cephaline here okay and so they play an important role in the transport of fats to tissues and they form the lipid bilayer again and so uh for uh what they call this and then of course as what we talked in the earlier parts of our class and so that you have your your lipid bilayer and so they function for permeability selective permeability Okay, and so, you know, again, and so the arrangement of your phospholipids in the cell membrane and so provides your selective permeability. Now you have your hydrophobic and hydrophilic, your tails and your heads. Okay, and so they, of course, with that, they control the entry and exit of uh, substances into the cell, into and out of the cell, of course. And of course, and so they help in emulsifying dietary fats and also, and so with that, of course, and so in digestion. Okay, and so other than that, and so they are component of lung surface, your phospholipids. Okay, and so uh, they are component of your lung surfactant. Okay, and so uh, you will ta be talking about this when you go into your, uh, probably in your CM. No, and then of course again, and so they can be they can, it can serve as a uh, energy source of energy. No, and so uh, you have actually a test that is done in the laboratory regarding your phospholipids, and so uh, you have there your the use of your ammonium molybdate. No, and so and then you all you also use a fusion mixture and so ilang beses na natin ginawa yon oh yan so probably and so you should have a bright yellow precipitates da ba and so the the positive result dapat for that is your bright yellow precipitate and so you 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 have your fusion mixture and so you charred and so you heat until it's charred and then you filter you add uh you add and then you filtered yes and then you add Ammonium molybdate into the filtrate and then you mix and then uh, there should be the uh, again there should be a production of bright yellow precipitates to give you a positive one and uh, that is a test for your phosphate ions should be okay and so that is uh, for your test for your phospholipids in there okay and so moving on and so you have the, your sphingolipids and so they are actually uh they are important components again of your animal and plant membranes no and so uh, your all actually of your sphingolipids and so they contain a uh, what they call this long uh, long chain of amino alcohol in the form of a uh, sphingosine okay and so in the form of sphingosine and so the sphingolipids and so they contain a core of ceramide and so that is a derivative of sphingosine and so your ceramide of course this one is a derivative of sphingosine okay and so <clears throat> they are found abundantly in the leaflet of your plasma membrane okay and so this this ceramide and so acts as a of course, and so your sorry, your sphingolipid, and so they are essential in uh the comp they are essential components of cell membranes still, no? And so uh you have there, okay, and so <clears throat> you have here your ceramide, and so your ceramide accordingly acts as a signaling molecule in apoptosis, and so in case, and so in stress response and in cell cycle regulation also aside from uh, apoptosis no 
Ayan, so you have uh, therein. So accordingly, your ceramide accumulation is associated with cellular stress response, no? Ayan, and then you have here, and so it forms you and maintains your myelin sheath, no? Ayan, so your sphingolipids accordingly, and so are important for the formation and maintenance of your myelin sheath. Ayan, are of, the, of course, this one, they are found around your nerve fibers, okay? And so in your nervous system. And so, of course, the sheath, the, your myelin sheath, is important for the rapid transmission of nerve impulses, no? Okay, and so let's take a look at your cholesterol. Okay, and so your cholesterol, and so this one, and so occurs in the uh, nervous system, and so they serve as a as insulator by forming part of your part of your myelin sheath, no? And so they help transport of helps transport fatty acids to different tissues of the body. Okay, and so your cholesterol, and so let's take a look at uh, this one. And so, of course, your cholesterol, and so they are major component of your cell membranes again, no? And so, again, with that, in, they are present in your membrane, and so with that, they help in the regulation of your membrane fluidity and the structural integrity of your membranes, no? And so you have there, of course, with that, your cholesterol, it allows the entry, and so, uh, I mean, sorry, allows your uh, cell membrane also, and so to resist changes in temperature, okay? And so, let's take a look at this one. Your cholesterol, this one is a source of your steroid hormone. And so, source, your precursor, your, what is this? Your, your, Cholesterol. And so your cholesterol, this is a precursor of your steroid hormones. And can you please add S here? And so it should be hormones, no? Because, and so precursor or source of your steroid hormones and then your vitamin D. Okay, and so with that, and so is a choles your cholesterol is a precursor of your steroid hormones like your cholesterol, your aldosterone, your testosterone your progesterone, and so you have there. And then, of course, the rest of your steroid hormones, no? And so, of course, these hormones, and so they play a, uh, they, uh, they are important in various physiological processes like in your stress response, metabolism, and uh, of course, in reproductive, in your reproductive function. And so, uh, you have there your progesterone, your estrogen, your testosterone, and so these are important in uh, reproductive in the reproductive system. Okay, and so your cholesterol, and so we talk about this one. This one is a is needed for the synthesis of your bile acids, no? And so needed in the synthesis of bile acids, okay? And so precursor, your uh, cholesterol is a precursor of your bile acids. And so, and they are essential for, of course, these bile acids. They are uh, needed for the digestion and absorption of dietary fats, of course, okay? And so, uh, you have there. And so, they are... Uh, help your bile acids and so they are important in emulsification of fats and of course uh, facilitating their facility i mean this emulsification facilitates the breakdown of your fats also okay and so your vitamin d synthesis and so you know this one also okay and so your vitamin d synthesis and so is a your uh precursor your cholesterol again and so is a Precursor for the synthesis of vitamin D. No, and so you have your seven dehydroxy cholesterol, and so uh, please uh, refer to the other video. We already talked about this one, and so uh, and this of course your vitamin D here, and so is essential. No, and so it's important for the regulation of your calcium and phosphorus metabolism. Okay, and so of course this one, and so your vitamin D, and so plays a, an important role in uh in bone health no and also in your immune system okay and so you have uh, 
there. And so other than that, ayan, so your cholesterol is important for brain functioning. Okay, and so you have a high concentrations of cholesterol is present in the brain. And so you note that the sample that we util that we used in your uh uh in your there is one test. There is one activity that you did this one. And so, AC, you, your sample is your brain. And so, no, this one actually. Okay. And so, with that. Okay. And so, there is a high concentration of cholesterol in the brain. And so, this one. And so, it contributes in the formation and maintenance of your synapse. No? Okay. And then, you have as a transport. And so, your transport, and so transport of cholesterol, and so, uh, it, your, sorry, your cholesterol, and so, is, uh, important in the transport of, involved, sorry, in the transport of your fat-soluble vitamins. And so, like, and so, your, uh, vitamin A, vitamin D, vitamin, vitamin E, and vitamin K, no? And so, you have, uh, there. Okay, and so that is for your cholesterol. Moving on, and so your rancidity. And so your rancidity, and so this one, and so is actually the development of unpleasant odors and flavors. No? And so when fats and oils undergo oxidation or hydrolysis, and so to giving them acidic. And so uh, you have there. And so note that your fats are neutral in reaction. And so of course, after that, and so nagiging acidic na sila. Okay. And so your hydrolysis, and so you will liberate volatile fatty acids. Okay. And so it will liberate volatile fatty acids. And these fatty acids are subsequently oxidized to form your odoriferous and so odorous, so volatile aldehydes and ketones. No? And so your fat, unsaturated fatty acids of your oleic series, and so because they are easily, uh, uh, what do you call this? They are easily oxidized and becomes rancid, no? And then your, uh, this one, your lipoxidase, lipoxidase, your heat, your moisture, and the presence of bacteria, and so contribute to the rapid onset of rancidity. And this one, of course, your rancidity here will destroy the carotene and so the vitamin A and the vitamin E present in the sample. Okay, and so that is for your rancidity. And so giving you and so acidic rancid odor, odoriferous, uh, volatile, uh, rancid in odor, no? And so you have uh, there. Moving on. You have your Sudan 3 test. And so your Sudan 3 and your Sudan 4, actually, they have the same uh, principle. No, and so your Sudan 3 is a dye and so dissolved in an alcohol and so or water probably. And so uh, this one and so is used to detect your Sudan 3 test is used to detect the presence of lipid in a solution. Okay, and so of course, and so this one is a based on the binding and solubility of uh, lipid in nonpolar compounds. Okay, and so let's take a look at this one. And so your Sudan 3 is a nonpolar stain and it combines with a nonpolar compound. And so with this, your Sudan 3, and so it binds with lipids and retains the color of the stain. Okay. And then you have your the color of the stain is your red orange. And so and of course that is retained. Okay, and so giving you a red orange droplets or red orange layers in the solution. And so that is a positive test for your Sudan 3 test. Okay, and so you have a red orange droplets, red orange color, or red orange uh, layers. Okay. Your bromine test. And so this one is your the, the idea of your bromine test is the same with your iodine test. And so that your uh uh your fats and so your unsaturated fats can undergo addition reaction in uh addition reaction with your uh, halogens, no, or your halogenation. Okay, and so they can undergo addition reaction with halogens. And so your halogenation. And so bromination, and so that is addition of bromine. And so this one is the same, and so it has a same principle with your iodine, with what we do did in your iodine. 
Okay, and so your unsaturated fatty acids again, and so they uh, uh, they can undergo addition reaction, while for your saturated ones, and so they cannot undergo addition reaction. Kasi nga, saturated na. And so, punong-puno na. Okay, and so there is no available. And so, they cannot add more. Okay, and so, you have your, of course, your sample is your bromine. And so, of course, your sample here is bromine. Okay, and so you add, add a small drop. I mean, your, uh, of course, you dissolve your bromine in a sample to, to give you a bromine solution. No, and so you add a few drops of bromine to a sample. And then, of course, the disappearance of bromine color indicates the presence of uh, double bonds. Okay, and so you have there, and so this appearance of your bromine color indicates the presence of double bonds. Okay, and so that is it for that. Okay, and so note that the color of your bromine is reddish brown, no? Okay, and so uh, if and so indicate if there if the uh, the original sample, and so did not change in color, or uh, it retains its original color after addition of sample. Ayan, after addition of sample, and so then uh, the sample is saturated. Okay, and so this appearance of the color of your bromine, and so indicates the sample is unsaturated or it has a double bonds. Okay, and so your fat metabolism. Okay, and so your fat metabolism. And so, of course, this one. And so, it has accordingly a disadvantage and uh, advantage. Okay, and so with this. And so, your note that your uh, fats. And so, they are, it, they are, uh, they contains high energy. No, and so you have there. And so, uh, your fats, your fat metabolism. And so, they can... Okay, and so in your fat metabolism, and so uh, it is advantageous, and so in a way that it regulates your weight, and so it regulates your weight, and so you have there, of course, a proper fat metabolism, and so contributes to weight regulation, no? And so uh, giving you a balance between the fat storage and, of course, the utilization, no? And then it ensures supply of fatty acid and so it ensures essential supply of your fatty acid and so as what we talked and so breaking down of your fats will give it will yield you glycerol and fatty acids no and so with that of course you have essential supply of fatty acids and your fat that is more efficient in storing energy okay and so moving on let's take a look at your advantages of lipolysis disadvantages sorry and so this one is a relatively a slower process and so comparing it to your uh, glycolysis no and so this one is the disadvantages and so lipolysis it is uh, it is advantageous in cases of uh, uh, what you call this uh, intensive physical activity okay and then of course there is a uh, production of uh, ketones okay and so there is a production of ketones and ayan and so your ketones and so excessive production of ketones and so can lead to ketosis and this one and so can give you serious uh, side effects okay and so negative effects okay and so that is for metabolism okay and so let's take a look at your what you call this at your uh, physical solubility in ether and solubility in water of your uh, these fats. No, and so your butter and so is solid or semi solid. Your lard also solid or semi solid. Your corn oil that is liquid and so your linseed oil and so that is liquid also. Your cholesterol and so that is solid in a way and so they are powdery. No, and so your steric acid. And so they are powdery, okay. And so they are solid, and so both, no. And so of course this two, and so, and so of course this what they call this two, uh, this fatty acids. I mean these fats are soluble in ether, petroleum ether, as what we use in the laboratory. But then they are 
not uh, soluble in water at any extent. Okay, and so you have uh, there. Moving on, you have here your acrolein test. And so your pungent, production of your pungent odor. And so your stearic acid dapat will give you a negative one. Your glycerol, your corn oil, and the rest, and so will give you a positive uh, test for this. Of course, giving you a pungent odor. Kasi nga, and so steric acid, it has no glycerol. And your steric, your acrylin test, and so this one is a test for uh, your glycerol, the presence of glycerol in a sample. And so your steric acid being, being fatty acid lang siya, and so it does not contain a glycerol, and so thereby giving you a uh, negative test. And so it will not give you a pungent odor. Hmm? Okay. And so your Lieberman and your Salkowski. And so of course this one, and so both of this, it detects your cholesterol in a sample. And so your positive result is your blue-green to, em to emerald green. And then for your Salkowski, you have your bluish-red to purple color. And so uh, you have red, and that is okay. And so your sample that you used, you have your egg yolk and brain sample. Okay, and so both of this, they have high amounts of... Uh, uh, cholesterol in the sample and so that is why and so dapat they will give a positive result okay and so those items okay and so that ends your activity 21 your properties of your lipids